Okay, so we're gonna do another experiment. I bought these Distress Mica crayons, and my only rule to myself was that I have to use them, okay? Because I was a little bit enthralled when I saw the Tim Holtz um, demo of them, but let me show you something. I have other Distress crayons that I've bought that I haven't used yet, okay? So we're gonna pull all my Distress crayons out. Distress, these are gelatos. We're not doing gelatos today. So, Distress crayons, bada bing. And I decided that unless I was gonna actually use them, it's ridiculous to keep buying things, right? So we are going to practice using distress crayons. Now, I have a gal. So supposedly these caps are a trifle more shiny than these caps. Okay. No. So we need to know which ones have the mica. And there is a gal who suggested this for my embossing pens to put and uh, washi tape on the ones that are um, mica based because they have pearlescent in them. Um, so we're gonna do that first, right? I'm not gonna try to figure out which of my crayons are which by the <laughs> slightly shinier caps. That's just never gonna happen. So we're gonna toss all those. We're gonna get a piece of tape that we like. Look at how cute this piece of tape is. Oh, should I keep that for like a project? Let's go with some orange Happy Mail. You won't be able to see this, this doesn't matter. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little piece of washi tape, bink, and go around the ends of this. Okay, so I'm going to do that, and I'm going to be right back. Okay, you might think it's crazy pants for me to do that, but I'm here to tell you that anytime I've taken the time to uh, fix my stuff before I start, I've always been happier. Okay, so now we're going to figure out what colors of the rainbow we have. So we have red, orange. That's kind of orange. That is in another language uh yellow 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 green i have a lot of green well i guess i don't have that much green green blue blue purple purple and then pink oops pink and then i have Okay, now here we have some different ones. We have black soot. We have white picket fence, right? Then we have brushed pewter, which is a metallic, and frosted juniper, which is kind of a metallic, and empty tomb, which is a metallic. But then we have hickory smoke, which is plain gray. We have walnut stain, and vintage photo, which are plain ones. And then tarnished bronze, which is um, a color, and antiqued bronze. And none of those are the mica. So let's, let's kind of move. Oh, and I have antique linen. That's a great color. Okay. So we kind of, to me, it feels like I have neutrals and colors, but we're gonna put these guys over here. We're gonna put these guys over here. And I am going to use a dialogue book. So I have a traveler's notebook with Diane Reevely. This is Dilusions from Ranger. And the reason I'm gonna use this is I feel like it's less high. Um, like this is better than using, for me, to do an experiment. This is better than using a um, journal or anything like that because I don't, f like if I throw this away, I'm not gonna be terribly sad. Um, so I was thinking maybe I could make just a little journal out of this, um, this one book. Okay, 
So we are going to find the middle of this book because this book only has one signature. Lots of dies. There we go. This is the middle. So let's go on the not the middle page. And I'm going to start with things that Tim Holt said. Okay. So he said, and this is, this is, um, uh, tag paper, um, mix. It's not mixed media paper. It's smooth. It's cardstock. I, it's probably like 90 something or 130 pound cardstock, just so you know, because we're going to do this with also black, uh, black tags from Joggles. So we're also going to do some of these experiments on black. And I have some uh, words I'm going to try. And I have um, some papers I'm going to try. Okay, so we're going to try all these things. And then we're going to try other crap on top of this crap. So... I literally need to know how this works, and I can't have um, layers that I don't understand. I'm looking for my Le Pen. Oh, my Le Pen is missing. It's probably under here. I gotta clean my desk. I'm not gonna do it right now, don't panic. All right, I gotta go find, oh, I have a whole box full of stuff. Okay, here we go. Ooh, a skinny Sharpie. I didn't know I would like them, but I do. Okay, this is right side up. So this is plain distress crayons. And this is, uh, we're gonna use first matte medium from Liquitex. Matte medium Liquitex. Okay, so. The first thing I'm going to do is I am going to, oh, this is a brand new one. Do I have an open one? Matte medium. Okay. So, uh, Tim Holtz used a uh, uh, collage medium to do this. I think you can use functionally any kind of sealant, right? Um, what you're trying to do is you're trying to seal this page so that... Um, the crayons can't sink in. So I can see a little sheen on here. You can't see a sheen really. And I wanted to do this first because we have to um, let this dry. And just so you know, I, oh, and we're going to do it on this one too. On one of these tags too, both sides. Uh, And that was with uh, <laughs> that was with a Posca pen. So that ink wasn't dry, but I, I will know that those mean that there's matte medium Liquitex on here. So we're doing one whole black tag with matte medium. We're doing one whole journal page. I'm just doing this because I have other stuff I want to do. Um, there we go. And this will dry clear. And you could use collage medium. You could use Mod Podge, which is a little bit more um, of a sealant and a top coat, less of a um, thing. You could water down some glue, uh, liquid uh, Elmer's liquid glue. All you're trying to do is seal this paper. So you use what you have. Don't go buy anything for this. Spend your money on the distressed crayons, not on sealing your paper. All right, so now we got a bunch of matte medium on here. Let's take a quick squirt, get it off. I cleaned my thing this morning. It was disgusting. Okay, so we are not going to ruin this brush. We're going to stick it in our nasty paint water, and we are going to try first. Ooh, we have to write on this one, too. Where'd our Posca pen go? Posca pens are paint pens. Literally. Did I put it back? Oh, I put it back. Holy buckets. Uh, what do you call this? Plain Distress Grands. 
And then we're gonna have that same thing on this side. Can we do it without making it smooshy? I guess we can't, huh? See, it kind of messed up that paint, but that's okay. We'll still know. Okay, and I'm using a We Are Memory Keepers glass mat that goes over my almost my whole table. I honestly, at this point, I wouldn't really want to do um, too much without it. Okay, let's get some of this out of our way that I'm not actually using right this second. Oh, look at this. This is my acrylic blocks. People are jelly. They're asking me about them. That does not belong there. Okay. So, let's do some plain distress crayons. And I'm not trying to swatch these out, nothing like that. I'm just trying to see how they work. This is a regular one. Okay. So I am gonna do kind of an abstract thing. And Tim said that it has a smudgeability factor right away. Okay, so we got that. Uh, let's do a, this is a mica one. So it should have a wee bit of shine and it, um, it's new, so it you can feel it's super gooey compared to the other crayon. And Tim says that that smudgeability factor goes away pretty fast. Okay, that's a orange mica, so we're not gonna do those on, uh, well, I guess we could. Okay, so we have the mystery orange crayon that I've obviously used with something black. Okay, let's just make some, uh, we'll come back and make some marks. And this is the Jack-O-Lantern. Very gooey. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, it's shiny. This one's way shinier than that one. I don't know that peppermint stick is that shiny. I got very excited about that one. All right, let's do, this is Holly Branch. Ooh, this looks more of a green. Ooh, that one's shiny. Okay. Let's go with a green to, oh, this is Bubbling Cauldron. We got a lot of greens in the shiny ones. And they appear, I would say that they appear to be more smudgeable, but they're the old, they're the new ones. I have old ones that just aren't smudging as much. Here's an old one. And Tim says they get, um, well, that one seems to be smudgier. A little bit. Okay. Uh, let's do some yellows. And he's so funny. So you can use your fingers, and he's like, well, change your um, change your tools, and he just means change your fingers, right? How silly is that? I love that. Okay, this one is a mystery crayon. A lot of these I got on clearance. They're, um, I've just kind of collected them over the years. So I don't think you need to buy all of every color. I don't have all of every color. And this is Holly Branch again. That's this guy over here. Um, so he could go either way. He could go yellow or green. Um, and then this is Flickering Candle. I love this one. I have the Mica Stains, and I just think this is just a beautiful color. Look at it glow. Can we move the glowy bits over the other bits? I feel like we can. Okay. And, okay, so let's talk about why I want to, like, distress crayons. So, number one, they're just a straight pigment, right? They're not, um, they don't have uh, dye in them. I used my green finger, so we'll have to try this later. Uh, so, they don't have like a dye in them. So they'll show up, we'll see this on the, uh, 
on the black stuff. Okay, this one is a mystery color. I'm going back to another finger. So, oh, that one, that one really didn't blend very well. Okay. This one is Hocus Pocus. Okay, so did you see just the other day, Villainous Purple came out? Now they won't, oh my goodness, this is smooshy. Uh, they won't do the crayons until there's like three of them. And I didn't get the recent crayon set that came out. So um, I figured if I wasn't using my crayons before, I wasn't allowed to buy just random crayon set. Oh, that's a nice one. What's this? Oh, this is part of Christmas. This is Winterberry. Very smooshy. Okay, so now let's go to our tarnished brass. Now these guys, these metallics, tarnished brass, antique bronze, and brushed pewter don't have color in them, right? They don't have any color in them. They just are the, the, the kind of pigment of the thing. So if you put them over here, it's going to make those other things look shiny. So we're not going to really focus on them. We're going to put them over on this side. And I'm really unhappy with what I did there. So I am, because I used a finger, I'm going to clean off my fingers. And I just used water, so it comes right off. But the thing is, when you're working with pigment, I don't know this for sure because I haven't tested this, but from what I understand, it's opaque. So I should be able to go right over there. And that was twisted broomstick and cover that oopsie I made, which it worked. This is hickory smoke. So this should be a gray. Let's go with that one. Okay, this is Empty Tomb, which should be a gray, but a shiny gray. I really do quite like the shiny ones. Then we have Frosted Juniper, which Tim says is kind of a gray, blue, green. That does not feel as gray. Yeah, that definitely has a lot more blue in it. Okay. And then we have black and we have white. So let's try black. Ooh, black is very black. Let's do a pinky. Ooh, I really like how black that black is. Tim's blacks don't have any blue in them or any purple in them, uh, which is super nice. Okay, and we should be able to see white on this too. So we're over here in our squares area. Well, you can't really see it, but it's not that color's fault because we're kind of on white. Okay, so this isn't dry yet. So let's go to our plain distress crayons on here. And I'm going to do something a little different because I like to have fun. So we're going to do, this is Peppermint Stick. This is, I think it's Festive Berries if I had to guess, but I don't, I don't know for sure. Okay. The mica, you can definitely see a little bit. The... The pink stick isn't doing much at all. This is Jack-O-Lantern. Woo, there we go. I feel like we got a lot of swooshiness in there. That's cute. Okay, here we go. We got uh, a mystery crayon. that I feel like so when I heard that this was pigment I kind of felt like I think I did this accidentally holly branch this is green again I see this green as yellow but it's green that's very green 
look in there. That's super green. So this guy, it, oh, flickering candle. This is my favorite color that I've seen so far out of the mica line. I just love how um, yellowy it is. This is a mystery color. If I had to guess, I would guess fossilized amber. But I definitely don't know. So let's do, okay, there we go. Well, this is very subtle. Like if you're looking for bold colors on black, um, I would go with paint. This is Bubbling Cauldron. And this is Tree Lot. Did we have Tree Lot last time? I don't know. This is a mica one. I like the mica. If I had to, if I had to, if you put a gun to my head right now, which I know is a weird thing to say, but it's a thing. I'm from Pennsylvania. We say weird things. Um, if you put a gun to my head right now, I would say I would like the micas better than the planes. And I had a feeling. I had a feeling. Snow flurries. This is a mica, so we should be able to see it. Okay. And this is a plain. I don't know what color that is. That may be chipped sapphire, if I had to guess. But I don't know. It's a blue. It looks kind of like the prize ribbon blue, but it's older. I know it's older than that. So it can't be the prize ribbon blue. This is... A mystery purple. Okay. Oops. And when you put your hand back in here, it smooshes. So I think that as a base, got a lot of smooshies. Um, since I touch my stuff so much. And this is that pretty pink that's the mica from the... Christmas, winter berry. All right, what else we got? We got those ones that are just mica. Let's do white, because this is white, and white should show up really well on this. Ooh, and it blends. It blended with that pink. Okay, I do not have a clean one. We're gonna have to use my thumb. Ooh, look at how nice that white blended. Okay, this is Crooked Broomstick, so this should show up. This is a mica. Okay, the micas definitely show up better than the crayons. I'm not going to put the gray hickory smoke on there, but this is Empty Tomb. A little shimmery, shimmery. And this is Frosted Juniper, and this is supposedly a really cute color. Okay. Ooh, it is a cute color. Okay, we're going to do one more on that. All right. So that's cute. I like that a lot. So that's plain distress. Okay, so we're going to do that for right now. This is going to be plain distress. We have another one. Now, I feel like, oh, it's a refreshing change. The other dog has to go out. I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing on here. So this is, that looks a little wet. I can still see a little bit of the white on there. This is pretty dry since I did that one first. All right, let's go through our thing. And this is mystery, so it's plain. Oh, I feel like it's got about the same smudging. Oops, we don't want that. This smudged more just because it's the mica and it's newer. Then we went to some oranges. And this is the candlestick one. Nope. Jack-o'-lantern. Oh, imagine that. That's smart. And then this is the mystery orange. Okay. 
All right, that smudged better, I feel like. I feel like that smudged a lot better. Okay, now we got some yellows. We got... <laughs> okay, this is that holly branch that goes yellow when it's by yellow, and then um, it's mica, number one, and number two, it goes yellow when I put it by the yellow, and green when it goes by the green, so that's kind of funny. So we have Flickering Candle, my favorite. I actually ordered an extra Flickering Candle mica stain which is the spray version, because it is, as a little zhuzhuzh, is nice. Let's see, how's that spreading? Okay, 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 it did. Okay, so here we go. This definitely spread better on here. It may be, so, so, one of the things, I took um, Tim's, all three of his creative chemistry classes and I'll put a link to that this is mystery green and I don't like that I smudged it with my dirty finger so we're gonna go over it again that's a nice thing about crayons the same way as we can with the paints you can fix mistakes that's just a smudgy mess what are we gonna do about that okay this guy, not so good. Not my favorite. This guy, Tree Lot Green. I think he's down here. Oh, yeah. Now, to me, that's kind of... Let's see how that looks with the Juniper, because both of those feel like... Where's, where'd that Juniper one go? Oh, well, I've lost it. Oh, anyway. Oh, Frosted Juniper. See, it looks gray. And these are both those mica crayons. But to me, those have very similar feelings. All right, I gotta fix my green mess right here. Boop, boop, boop. And this is Bubbling Cauldron. Because even though I'm, I'm doing this, this is my actual art, you know? <laughs> I just like to test things out, but I'm actually trying to make art right now. I know it looks like, it doesn't necessarily look like it. Oh, that's nice. I like these, uh, this is snow flurries. I kind of like these, uh, the creaminess of these. Anyways, the where I was going, oh, and this is an old one, but it's very creamy. So where, ooh, look at that blue. Where I, oh yeah, so see? That really made a difference. This really made a difference. So where I was going with, I wasn't just bragging that I took three Tim Holtz art classes, right? Um, was that he taught, he taught the composition of the um, products. So is it a, um, Is it a pigment? Is it a dye? Uh, will it work? Will it be permanent? Will it work over this? Will it work over that? And so the nice thing about having taken those is I can kind of, those class, oh, look at that. That really changed. These, these guys down here are really doing something different with the uh, gel medium. I like those a lot better. Oh, I kind of like what's happening. Okay. Um, anyways, learning those... Nope, those are the ones that don't move. Uh, but learning those different things about how technically dyes and pigment, pigments work really made a difference in my, in my art. Not just with Tim Holtz stuff, okay? Because it doesn't matter if it's a um, Tim Holtz thing or if it's a um, Altenew or, you know, Nuvo Tonic or anything like that. It doesn't matter whose product it is. If it's a dye, it's going to act this way. If it's a pigment, it's going to act this way. If it's permanent, if it's water-based, things like that. 
Okay, so those guys, I feel like, I feel like there was a difference. It's worth priming it. I feel like we're going to keep doing this. Okay, here we go. Red. This is with the Liquitex on the black. This is the Mica, still pretty. Okay. Orange. Oh, this is the pretty. This is a pretty one. I really like the Jack o' Lantern and I like the um, flickering candle. Mystery. And I've just learned a little tip through doing this. Is this that one? No. Through doing this is if you take a little bit of the um, smooshiness of the mica, you can apply it to the plain ones. This is flickering candle. To me, that's just a very pretty gold. Okay, so we are getting much much bolder and um, defined colors. Here's that weird one, Holly Branch. So we're putting, okay. So this one is turning green because the mica in the hall, okay, here we go. Let's talk about this weird Holly Branch thing that goes two ways. So this is Holly Branch, this is Holly Branch. It looks greener here, it looks yellow here, but the mica in Holly Branch is actually green. So anyways, long story short. So let's keep going. Uh-oh, I got out of my lines. This is a mystery green. This is Tree Lot. Ooh, that's pretty. That's pretty on black. Okay, I'm kind of loving them on black way more than I love it on, I don't know what this is. This is Bubbling Cauldron. Oh my goodness. I am totally, okay, so, so order of things. I am totally digging it on black way more than I am on white or cream. And then I'm totally digging it on the, so can I, oh my gosh, look at that. You also don't get as many, I wonder why, you don't get as many finger marks in it when you've done a, a, a preemptive layer. I don't know that, okay. So that to me doesn't make sense. That's the first thing that has come up that I can't immediately go, oh, okay. So it makes sense that that would happen. I don't understand why it would um, keep the fingerprints out of, like it's, it feels like it's sort of grabbing the um, crayon better. I don't know why that would be, but that's very interesting. Oh, this is Hocus Pocus. I love this with the mica in there. That's gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, we're doing pink. Nice. Um, white was our next one, right? White, boop. All right, we need a clean finger for that. Oh, oh gosh, I am not a lefty. My son is ambid <laughs> My son is ambidextrous, and I got to clean my hand and redo that little batch of ridiculousness. Okay, my son is ambidextrous, Josiah, and he can do things. Um, actually, in sports, he's more lefty than righty. Um, Oh, there we go. If I push hard, I can make it happen. But it wasn't it wasn't as easy to do it on there. Um, anyways, but in sports, he uh, he he plays in left-handed. 
Okay, so then we had some of these fun ones. Frosted Juniper. Ooh, that's such a pretty color. Okay, clean finger. Oh my goodness. Okay. I think this is pretty. What else we got? Black, no, no. Crooked broomstick. This feels a little bit like on um, on white. This is kind of a little bit brown, but on this, it feels a little bit um, goldy, brass, brassy. Empty tomb is definitely a silvery color. Nice. And then hickory smoke should just be gray. Just use that to top off our rainbow. And that has no color in it. So let's see if we can go back and, uh, okay, so on here we can unsmudge our finger marks. And these are kind of going away anyways. So I had thought that the smudgies were going to be a problem. I don't feel like they're a problem problem. Okay. So I really, I like this much better with the Liquitex matte medium. Okay. Whew. This is exciting. Okay. Now we are going to experiment with this, I feel like I need another set of this because I have all kinds of things I wanna, I wanna try. So we're gonna do mark making. Let's go this way. Plain distress crayons, matte medium distress crayons. Okay, all right. Nope, that's clear gesso. I don't like clear gesso. I think clear gesso is the devil because it eats my Posca pen brushes. So I would use uh, collage, uh, uh, Distress Collage. I would use Liquitex Matte Medium. I think uh, Dina Wakely has a medium. I would use anything, Mod Podge. I would use glue watered down before I used clear gesso because it eats my gel pens. I feel like I don't have much on this side. So we're gonna come back through here and just put a little bit down this side. Okay, so we're gonna let this dry, but in the meantime, we're gonna make some marks. Okay, so let's go with a green. So, lines and this is a map this is a not a shiny one okay this is a not a shiny one oh i don't mind it for dots they're they're a larger dot like i don't think you could make a tiny uh weensy dot i took a seth after class the other day about making marks so we're gonna use some of the ones that I came up with. Okay, this is plain. So we're gonna do a circle. Definitely not easy to control the edge. It is a fat edge. Not easy to control. All right, let's see if we can find one with kind of a flat top. That one has kind of a flat top. Let's see what happens if we go flat top down. So you're going to get a different wider line than if you go side to side. Okay. All right. What do we got now? Uh, oh, dot dash, dot dash. Okay. Here we go. Dot dash, dot dash dot 
dash. Not good for dot dash, I don't feel like. Not my favorite. Um, oh, like a, like a checkerboard. Not that great. Plus signs? Oh my goodness, if this could make plus signs. <gasps> kind of does a nice plus sign. That's the, oh, that does a really nice plus sign. I struggle with making plus signs because I can't make fat lines with most of my stuff. Um, Let's make sure, let's try one of the fancy new ones and see if plus signs are good with the mica. Plus, plus, okay. I love the plus signs with the distress crayons. I am pro distress crayons for plus signs. Stars, ooh, this is gonna be, this is gonna be nasty. Star, star, star. Star, star, star. They're very, um, I think you can slightly tell they're stars, but not really. And I'm not giving away any examples. These are not, um, like, like Seth After didn't give us a list of marks. These are the marks that I use a lot. So, uh, little dots. So let's, we did small, small dots. Let's do bigger dots. Circles. I'm aware that bigger dots are actually circles. Don't mock me. Okay. Eh. I like them a lot better on the matte medium circles. Those didn't turn out cute. Um, bu -bu -bu. I did that one. Squares, I've done squares, I've done triangles, three lines. All right, this is, oh, I want to kind of save that one. This is not, well, I just did three lines. Right next to the three, three lines is something I do a lot, obs. All right, let's make, well, we can't do that with this one. Okay, this is not fine detail, peeps. Oh, how about outlining? Um, okay. I feel like it gives us a de decent outline. Like we can kind of take the smudginess of what happened before. Sort of like outlining. Oh, I like it better when we've done a little. A little outline around it. Okay, now I feel like, okay, I will tell you that if I was working on an art piece, I would make my, um, my marks and then I would outline them all because I have been like, I've been wondering what I'm doing here and then once I outline these, because I guess I'm not a blurry artist, so once I gave them definition, and that's why you keep going, right? That's why you keep working on your stuff because you never know and you wanna try stuff. This is mystery. 
This is a nice yellow. I would guess, because I really enjoy fossilized amber. If I had to guess, I would guess this is fossilized amber. There we go. All right, let's do some. Nope, we have a lot of that blue. Let's do green. And then this is that funny juniper one. Frosted juniper. All right, outlining, very nice. Very pleased with outlining. Especially with this frosted juniper that kind of changes colors depending on what it's near. Look at how much better that looks. Okay. Okay. So for outlining, it's good. We're still letting this one dry. Where'd it go? <laughs> We're letting it dry next to the other one. So let's get our black ones back. Here we go. So this time we're gonna put a bunch of color on there. So we're gonna do plain distress. This is no matte medium underneath. Holly branch. There's some uh, texture from the, um, <laughs> it's going to come as a shock to you. There's some texture from me smooshing the matte medium down on the um, tabletop. Okay, these are, the ones I grabbed are all mica except for that one. But that one, I mean, we can see right away. That's just plain. So let's do some more plain ones. This is plain. So just from a coverage aspect, you get a lot better coverage if you um, use your matte medium. I can tell you that. You can see this purple a little bit better on the... Uh, but honestly, the micas are really shining on this. I'm looking for light non-mica colors because I don't have a whole lot of <laughs> this blue. We shouldn't be able to see much of it. Oh, there's another one that surprised me. I had thought we wouldn't see much of that at all. And I, I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it. Okay. Anything? Oh, antique linen. like a um just a a beige a really nice beige color okay so i am going to let these dry for a bit i don't know if they set let's see if they set okay we're gonna let this dry and then we're gonna do the same thing over here and then we're gonna let them all dry Okay, I feel like the amount of color you get with this is really nice. That's a mica. This is non-mica. Pink. Okay. So we're going to let all of these dry, and I shall be back. Okay, so now we are going to try different things with these already dried crayons. So plain matte medium plain matte medium okay so first off oh they really don't they really don't move right so for me that really makes a difference so let's check and see what happens if we do some water spots on them okay and from my understanding from tim holtz is 
if you do water and you don't move them, it's not gonna do much of anything, okay? So I kind of feel like just getting them wet isn't doing anything, which is, for me, is brilliant because then it feels a little bit like, oh, look at this. So we got no, okay, we got one tiny little bit that it just did something, something, but not too much at all. So if you do water and you don't move them, it's fine. Okay, so we're gonna come up here to this. We're gonna do drippy of water, drippy of water, drippy of water, drippy of water, and move it. Okay, so this is moving. So if you put water on and you move it, it will move. All right, so let's do something cute with it instead of just leaving it nasty. Okay, so let's do cute, cute, cute. All right, so huh. I kind of like plain distress thus far. So let's see if we do this and move it. What Tim Holt said was if on, on the plain uh, distress, if you put water on it and you try to move it, it's going to... Um, It's gonna sink in to the memory of that paper and you'll get those lines. But see over here, we didn't get really any like nasty lines. You can smooth it all out, okay? So that's okay. Now, the thing I really wanna know is what can I do over top of this, right? Like I understand it's pigment, let's try this. I don't want any water on here. I sacrificed those little parts for you guys because I'm nice. Okay, let's try Sharpie marker. So we're gonna do Sharpie marker. Oh, we're starting to lose Sharpie marker. It's working over here, but over here, I think I'm starting to, I'm not getting as good on there. Okay, so Sharpie markers seem to work really well on distressed crayons on uh, cardstock, but maybe not necessarily on black. Now let's try this. White. Pasca. We're going to wipe it off in between. White Pasca. White Pasca. White Pasca. Oop, let's not get distress crayon all over my upcoming projects. And it did, it did color my, the end of my white Posca pen. I might have to write this out, you know, like, just keep writing until it's gone. But that's okay, I mean, that's happened with other things. So let's see what happens with that. Let's try. Let's try India ink. That seems to work really well. There's not much of a contrast here, but it works fine. I'm not getting a bleed. Looks great. Good job, India Ink. India Ink is permanent. Here's Alcohol Ink, also permanent.
fine on there. Now my problem with alcohol ink is that it goes through. It didn't go through there, it didn't go through there. So this was coated so it shouldn't go through there, but it looks as if, see how we're only seeing slight things? That the um, distress crayons also helped protect that page a little bit. All right, what else we got over here? We got distress paint. So let's try a little bit of distress paint on here. I want to see if this is going to activate the crayons. I don't feel like it is. Maybe a wee little bit, but, oh, there we go. Kind of on the edges. I think it could, oh, is it the thing where you have to agitate it? Because Tim Holt says you can't really, like, crayons aren't going to do anything until you agitate them. What color do we have? We have yellow? All right. We're gonna wash this off. Yep, we're clean. And we're gonna do some India ink. Oops, we forgot to do it over here. All right, we'll do it over here too. Where's our another one? There it is. Okay, India ink. Ooh, it'll be interesting to see what India ink does on just black, but let's see if it's activating that paint or that crayon. It does appear as if that made kind of a greener color. Let's try it with orange. So that's alcohol ink. And I do feel like the crayon went away underneath it. See how we can't see the crayon underneath it anymore? Okay. This would make green if it's activating. And it is making green for sure. We can see more of the color changes over here. But that, that um, India ink is activating the... Um, Let's see how it looks different depending on whether we, so this is much, well, India ink seems to like make it smoochy, but you can still see the lines under there. I don't know if you can see them, but I can see the lines under there. Okay, so for sure, India ink activates it. Let's see about texture paste. This is translucent texture paste. Do I have any clean brushes? We're gonna have to use a silicone brush. So texture paste is turning a color, right? So that's definitely turning purple. Let's see if it turns this color. Yeah, definitely turning a color. So texture paste, I think if you maybe did, okay, so if you did texture paste, matte media, yeah, see it's this texture paste is just pulling that crayon right off of this matte media. 
Now it shouldn't pull it off the matte media, but it should change colors over here. Or it shouldn't pull it off the open paper, but it should change colors over here. You should still have those lines. Oh, it's kind of kind of taking it up a little bit. Okay, so I feel like I learned a lot. Permanent writing inks, alcohol ink. White Posca turned brown. Uh, White Posca did okay, but not great. Indie ink did fine, but there's not like a white Indie ink. I think I would have a hard time writing in white over it. Um, alcohol ink did just fine. Sharpie started to get, like it hurt the pen. The pen was, it's a really sharp nib. Maybe that's why. But it um, definitely started to clog up the Sharpie. Distress paint had enough liquid in it that it started to activate it. Um, uh, India ink totally activated it and picked up the color and took, took, you know, yellow India ink with blue and made green both ways. I do think this looks much prettier than this does. This is very muddy and... Um, you can feel the paper is being hurt with this. The paint didn't hurt the paper, but it definitely had enough liquid content in it that it took it up. So some things that I like for my mixed media. I love the X's. Where'd they go? So I love being able to make X's. I love the fact that once it's dry, you get very little smudge. Like, you're not getting a nasty smudge. You can wet it. You can squirt water on it. And if you don't move it, it doesn't bother it, right? Um, I think that's kind of amazing. And uh, so I think as a medium, I think it's going to work for me in that I can play with the, the properties of the water solubleness, but still have an assurance that I know how to make it stick without it reacting. Like I know what products I can use in my art practice. Hopefully some of these ones are the ones that you use, but the ones that I can use in my art practice to not activate it. And like, if I want to do something over it and move it, I can't um, manipulate it that much. So hopefully that helps. Tara Jacobson, Artsy Fartsy Life.